Okay, so this is a video to help us understand the uh, normal distribution, um, uh, build on some of the work today, and uh, so we can draw a graph of the normal distribution and then use that to work out probabilities and percentages. Uh, now, I'll, look, I've got loads of tabs open here, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go back to um, uh, the, the very basics. So one of my tabs up here, I've got actually x as a variable here. Um, and this was the, uh, the the heights of my plants, a sample of seven from my fictitious greenhouse. Okay, and this is a sample of seven from you know hundreds and hundreds of plants in the greenhouse. And what we found was the mean for this was four, and the standard deviation I think was one point three one. Okay, and we're going to use those numbers um, to draw a distribution that represents all the population of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of plants in my greenhouse. Okay. Um, but you see, I've already got this X being used here and X is kind of used in graphs as well. So I don't want to confuse the X's. So best thing is doc, um, insert, and then a new problem. Now, when it goes to a new problem and have a graph, can you see it goes to a 2.1 here? So all the one points are together. And that includes the spreadsheet and the previous analysis, the 2.1. Now, this is a fresh start. So I'm going to draw a graph. Norm. Norm PDF. Remember, Carl Friedrich Gauss designed this. So it's a beautiful bell shape and it's got perfect symmetry. And then we have to put the variable x. Think about when you're drawing, you know, y equals 3x plus 2. That's a straight line graph, isn't it? Um, so it takes something... Um, it does something with the x values and it produces um, an output, a y value. Uh, we need two other numbers to go with that. We need the mean first and then the standard deviation. When we do that, we get this lovely curve. You can't really see the pronounced curve here because the scale's all pretty weird. Now, don't forget the y-axis is representing probability um, or relative frequency. So let's go menu, window zoom, window settings. And I think you remember this was zero centimeters up to 10. And then the y-axis, the probabilities, we were going to go from negative 0 0.1 up to 0 0.5. And press OK. So there you go. Now you get this nice shape of the graph. Now notice a few things. Um, if you see this peak here, this peak here happens bang on the mean. So this is x equals 4, 4 centimeters. And what you'll find is the area under this graph represents the um, the percentage of all my particular plants in the greenhouse, the heights of them, and what percentage have a certain height. And because it's symmetrical, then you would say 50% of all plants have a height less than 4, and 50% of plants have a height greater than 4. Okay, so that's just the general shape of it. But now we're going to use this to find out various probabilities. So let, let's just think about that. Let, let, I'll try it now, actually. Menu, Analyze Graph, and we'll go for Integral. So this works out the area, and area represents probability. Okay, so on here, I'm going to work out the lower bound. I'm going to do as 4 centimeters. Press Enter. And the upper bound, I'm actually going to put as 10. Can you see the percentage here? It says I've got 0 0.49999, so that, that's just about 50% of all my plants in the greenhouse are between 4 centimetres and 10 centimetres. Okay, um, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click on and delete the number, and that'll delete the area as well. Um, so what about how many plants, what percentage of all the plants in my greenhouse have a height, let's say, between uh, 3 centimetres and 4 centimetres? Menu, Analyze Graph, Integral, type in 3, Enter, type in 4, Enter. And can you see that? So 0 0.277. So as a percentage, that's 27.7. So 27.7% of all my plants have a height between 3 and 4 centimetres. Now that's assuming that, you know, the real life data, as in the heights of plants in my greenhouse, follow this type of distribution, a normal distribution. Um, so let's switch out now to the work I'm wanting you to do. And here on part A, well, we've got the graph already we're going to use. And now I'm going to look specifically at the mean value. But I'm going to just say, how far away is one standard deviation above the mean? 
and one standard deviation below the mean. So can you see how I've got these particular numbers? I've just taken the mean and added on 1.31, one standard deviation. And so I'm actually going to use this now as my lower boundary, 2.69 and 5.3 as my upper boundary. So let's go back here. I can click on the previous answer, just delete it. Menu, Analyze Graph, Integral, number six. And what were the lower and upper bounds again? Lower bound was 2.69, 2.69. And the upper bound is 5.31. And there you go. So we're going to use this number now. And so let me set the scenario. If you walked into my greenhouse and picked one plant at random, uh, the probability uh, of you choosing a plant that was between 2.69 centimeters and 5.31 would be 0 0.683. Okay. Um, so that means that we're going to put 0 0.683 here. And then that also means that actually, if I change that to percentage, 68.3, 68.3% of all my plants are between 2.69 and 5.31. Now that's within one standard deviation of the mean, which is the mean is four. Okay. So you're going to repeat and you're going to fill in um, the mean is four plus two standard deviations. So that takes me up to 6.62. You should be able to see how you get that. So I need now four minus two standard deviations. What kind of height does that take you down to? Then fill in the probability and percentage here. And then the same for plus and minus three standard deviations. Okay. When you fill that in, we're going to do it again. We're going to go and adjust here. Um, we can go delete. We can double click on the graph we previously drew. We'll change this to five as a mean and a one as a standard deviation and then we'll do just the same analysis but the numbers here will be probably a lot easier to deal with so look mean is five centimeters mean plus one standard deviation is five centimeters plus one centimeter so that takes us up to six and you should be able to fill in the mean minus one standard deviation and the rest here and then fill in the the gaps here and once you've done that with a couple i mean you can do more if you want change this to Anywhere between 5 and 10, change the standard deviation here into, I don't know, anything between 0 and 3. Um, and you can do the same analysis. And it'd be interesting to see what probabilities and percentages you get here. Once you've done that, you're going to choose from these nine words. You're going to choose eight of them to fit into the gaps. And one of them is a bit of a bogus word. Okay, so see how we get on with that.